Hello, and thanks for coming along to And We Have an Office Dog, the digital agency podcast where we talk to agency owner directors and learn more about what makes them tick. From the things that make them similar to the things they'd rather have known sooner, where they've had success, and where they've learned some hard lessons. All will be revealed with your host, Chris Simmons, the agency coach, and he'll be talking to a different awesome agency person in each episode, asking them four questions and seeing where the conversation takes us over the next 25 minutes. Okay, so let us begin. Over to you, Chris. Thanks, voiceover guy. Thank you very much for that wonderful intro that definitely wasn't recorded over a year and a half ago. Hi, Jesse. Nice to have you on. It's a pleasure to be here, Chris. How are you doing today all the way in sunny Ottawa? It is sunny. You did your research. I think the the natural thing to talk about first is weather, right? And it's sunny. It's been <laughs> quite poor for a while, but it's sunny today. So, See, it, I, I do always research the agencies that I talk to and mostly the weather being a Brit. That's all we need to know. Um, so we can end this podcast. Thanks very much for coming along. We now know what the weather in Ottawa is. <laughs> Um, so Jesse, for those who don't know you, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about soap. Yeah, certainly. So, um, about myself, I grew up, uh, an entrepreneurial family. My dad ran a, a DJ business doing weddings for about 45 years or so still does it. So I've uh, been around the entrepreneurial, uh, spirit, so to speak, um, started my own little businesses when I was. I think the age of 15 with a rusty lawnmower, pushing it around, door knocking and things like that. Um, never had any big successes uh, or anything like that. Some failures, some minor successes, um, you know, ran marketing teams in the past. And I would say the last decade I've been uh, mainly in the agency space and now a part owner in uh, in Soap Media. And we're, uh, you know, we're uh, obviously a boutique digital marketing agency. We're a team of... Uh, of 13 right now and growing very quickly, but being mindful of our growth so we don't grow um, too quick and it impacts clients at all in a negative way. So um, mm. yeah, it's a little bit about me and uh, about us so far. So why why soap? Uh, is it is it? I, I made this joke at the beginning before we recorded and I thought it was really funny, so I'm gonna do it again. Why soap? Is it because you guys are really clean? <laughs> I get asked that question a lot, and thankfully I know the answer. So it stands for Socialize, Optimize, Analyze, Promote. So it is an acronym. I didn't name the company. My business partner, which is actually my father-in-law, so I've worked with my father-in-law for a very long time. My wife for mm -hmm. a very long time. We're family-owned and operated, so I'm part owner. Um, he named it. Um, it's a question I get asked a lot. So it's yeah. Not too too clever of a name. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure that almost everyone on the on the North American continent love an acronym, and it just seems like everything has one, which is fine. I love it. Um, so I think you probably, I mean, you look nice and clean as well, which is good to good to see. Um, you. Listeners, you 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 uh, you can rest assured that he has used his soap. Um, so how long has the agency been running? So the agency's been running now for uh, a bit over a decade, but really aggressively as a you know hiring and scaling would honestly mm. be the last three four years that we've really taken off. Before that, it was mm. uh, you know my father in law kind of ran the agency on the side, worked for the federal government full time as well, and you know eventually left and pursued it full time with me about uh, probably about four years ago or so now. Mm. So, so what's been one of the biggest successes that you guys have seen so to date, I guess? I mean, I, I you know I hear a lot of agency owners talk about processes and such, and you know th that is very key, I think, to our growth is uh, understanding you know the sales process. So I'm I'm usually the first point of contact, and we've really ironed out a a value focused process and flow that is very streamlined. So um, you know, a company comes to us, we um, we do a discovery call. Then the next step is we give a recommendations video. It's all the recommendations. Uh, it's very mm -hmm. customized, very personal, and then a proposal. That having that one, two, three process on the sales side has been critical to our success. Um, and then the other one really is we eliminated trying to be a jack of all trades. So back in the day, we did email marketing. We did, uh, you know, we 
do SMS, whatever it really was, we would just kind of do it, right? Um, we have the knowledge and the know-how how to do these things, but we realized we wanted to be experts at yeah. uh, you know, specific areas. So we decided that, you know, website development and tracking, you know, GA4 and, and Google Tag Manager, all of that, that's going to be the core. We need to have that mm. foundation piece. And then the main marketing channels that we use to drive traffic is search engine optimization and paid advertising. So whether that be meta advertising or, or Google ads, that's what we do. We do those three things and we, we, we like to think we do them quite well. Yeah, that I well, uh, nearly a decade of of running at least something's going well, which is fantastic. It's a, it, it's I think you're right when you say you know it, it's a success to to have decent processes and things like that. Like the sales process is key, and and I always say to to agencies that I work with that the selling doesn't stop once the contract's signed. So the process <laughs> that you that you have. Uh, you know, nicely dovetails into the delivery of the services and things, which which means that you know you're constantly selling your value or the value of the the outcome, because realistically, yeah. you're selling something that's invisible. Please, can you give me money right now for an outcome in the future that probably will happen because we know what we're talking about? But I'd like the money now, please. So because because of that, you you know you you've got to uh, kind of keep the the sales process alive in a way it never kind of ends does it there's upsells there's there's all sorts of other things um but i think you I, I, it's really good to hear that you know you identified that jack of all trades isn't the way to to necessarily go i think you know very closely aligned services are great um but loads of closely aligned services are it's an operational nightmare costs time costs money um stress pressures everything it's it's not fun at all Absolutely. Yeah. Sales never stops. I mean, um, last time I looked at retention statistics for marketing agencies, and I've heard a lot of people on this podcast even mention how how most agencies or a lot of agencies have a bad reputation and rightfully so we've experienced mm. the same thing. So, you know, we have a philosophy here, like you just mentioned, sales never, it never stops. So mm -hmm. our average retention, I would say is well above a year with our clientele. Um, I think here in Canada, at least it's like six to eight months. We're probably pushing a year and a half, maybe wow. two, uh, depending. We have clients that have been with us for you know six, seven years plus. Um, we have a philosophy where we try to have half of our agency growth every year come from existing clientele. So we're always mm. selling, getting new clients, but we, we try to instill the mindset into our clients that, hey, look, we're an investment. As you invest money with, with Soap Media, and you see that payoff and you see the return, thankfully, you know, we're in digital mm -hmm. marketing, we can show that, invest exactly. more, you'll get more. So we, we've had a lot of our growth actually stem from that as well. That's that's great. And and and, and those retention figures uh, for for the wider um, industry in, in Canada is shocking. <laughs> yeah, it's scary, yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. Great. It's great for you, but just the wasted effort and energy and time, like the, the churn of going around the sales process Let's say a sales process takes between two weeks and a month sometimes at best. Yep. Uh, that's one month before the countdown clock for six months starts, which is just, that's, oh, my God, that's painful. I, I feel that in my soul. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So if you could go back in time to when you when you first uh, joined and, and, and uh, started running the business, um, what what kind of piece of advice would you give yourself? You know, you, you've zipped into your um time machine you popped back and you've seen your younger self and you've thought oh crikey i've i've, I've gotten a bit older um what <laughs> advice do you give yourself to learn to delegate sooner um mm. you know a, a bit of a perfectionist with some things i think in life work being one of them uh i just took on more and more and more and um you know it wasn't until you know this last three four years where we really started scaling and you know uh, mm grew substantially that I learned that you have to delegate, have to have people that are much smarter than yourself. And the sooner you get to that point, the sooner you have some some clarity yeah. and peace of mind because, you know, there's only so many hours in a day and you can, you know, kind of kill yourself working if you yeah. anything you can do at all. So it's it's an art form being able to delegate. It really is. Um and 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 I I don't know about you, but the initial first step the pain of doing it like properly the first time uh is 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 quite significant because not only are you giving away 
control of something which you know intimately um but you're also risking what you see as what good looks like not coming back to you and the you know the the kind of process should we say for delegation is um seemingly obvious but it's not that easy that's right i i couldn't agree more with that it's um i i, I often found um, and i find it a lot with agency owners they say oh it's it takes too long to delegate or i've not got the time for that i could do it in 10 minutes they and you're like yeah sure if you delegate it the first time it's going to take you an hour the second time you yeah. delegate it's half an hour and then after that you never have to do the job again aside from delegating it to someone else and then you'll see the results come in. People will be happier. You end up keeping your staff longer. You get staff that are better at their jobs because you've invested your your own leadership time into them. It's it's crazy, um, but it is hard though. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, it's it's very hard. I mean, um, you and I were talking about books quickly before this, and how many mm. books we don't actually read. But <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of books that I have read, and one of them was Clockwork by Michael something. Um, it was a really good book that I read probably about a year and a half ago. And it was really on, you know, getting the right processes in place and learning yeah. sooner than later that um, you can't do everything. And if you're going to scale a company, you need to have the right people in the right roles yeah. and determine what's called, you know, your queen bee role, right? In the hive of bees, there's, um, you have to all serve the queen. So there's a role internally here at our agency at Soap Media that, everybody needs to serve which is ultimately communication so mm -hmm. um client communication we i've seen it so many times where agencies get um phenomenal results for for companies and then they come to us and we're looking at it we're like why did they leave this agency because they were doing mm -hmm. a great job but they weren't effectively communicating the results and on the flip side of that we found too that you know we're, we're very transparent with our clients we don't fluff or manipulate the data so if there's a bad month we go to a client and say hey look it was a bad month this month uh, but if we look at the last six months you can see you're actually up overall um, here's some problem areas here's some solutions mm. so everyone serves that role but the the thing that i really struggled with was the individual roles outside of that so to not be you know into the Google Ads accounts and checking them yeah. all the time and making sure budgets are where they need to be and all that fun stuff. That that's it's the letting go that become that becomes harder the longer you hold on, doesn't it? Yes. Oh gosh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there anything that you like over the course of um, time that you've been in the agency? Is there anything that you like kind of really regret having done, but has? been a lesson that, that has made the agency what it is now really regret having done i mean we've made a lot we've done a lot of testing and you know but mm. that's a split testing i think I, I wouldn't say i regret that i think i really do believe the biggest regret was was it, it goes just in alignment with what we're talking mm -hmm. about was me trying to do everything um trying yeah. to manage i believe we would be i mean we've grown substantially and we're you know we're fortunate to be the size we are today um and growing but i believe i actually was the biggest thing holding back the growth trying yeah. to do it all um so that's that's perfectly in alignment with what we we're just talking about that's my my biggest regret is trying to handle I, I, everything I, I think that it's probably if every agency owner at a certain size was honest with themselves, I'd say that um, uh, they become the, the the blocker in their own growth in the long term. And it's usually it's usually for no other reason than the agency was started by some people who knew what they were doing. And then uh, as the teams grew, it became harder to let go. But letting go was also scary because you spent all that effort getting the clients in, and so on and so forth. And and um, uh, and 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 sometimes, like it's that highest paid person's opinion type thing. I already knew all this when, so I started the place. Don't you tell me what to do? I know better than you. I <laughs> I pay your salary. <laughs> yes, right, exactly. It's um, it's really key part of leadership. I think is that. Um, you know, once you realize you, you're hiring people who are either more smart than you or more capable than you at the thing that they're there for, um, then you can really get down to the job of leadership and management and growth of the agency. You know, you start working on the business, not in the business. And there's a big distinction. I think quite a lot of times when people have started to realize that there's like a watershed moment and something something happens to, to them as, as business owners, they stop being um, kind of, 
it stops being guesswork and, and gut feeling and starts being let's have a strategy let's work out how to implement it and let's see how we can how we can deliver that absolutely and to to give employees as you scale you know free reign to invent or add processes and mm. you know i was you know ego is one thing ego is a horrible thing in so many cases and that was something i was guilty of is you know, they'd start doing something, it wouldn't be done right. And, you know, what, what you mentioned earlier, you know, in 10 minutes, I, I'd hop in, I'd just do it. But not asking myself, how does that make, you know, that employee feel? Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, when you go in and do the work, does that make them feel useless? Does that, um, and they're not learning, you're not training, you're not educating. And, um, you know, it's Simon Sinek, I don't know if I pronounced his last name right, with Start With Why, and he's got a few other books. Mm. Um, you know, he, I think he did a TED Talk where he's talking about, you know, what leadership really is. And, um, you know, that once I started to really understand that and uh, I saw big changes and, you know, now our team says, oh, you know, this, this should be done this way. Or what about this? And just acknowledge the ideas, even if they're a bad idea, like I have bad yeah. ideas all the time, just acknowledge the ideas and uh, accept that you're not going to know everything. That's a, that's a big thing. That's it. That's it. The, 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 the good thing is though, when, when you do have the chance to step back, the, the not knowing everything isn't that scary because at least you know hopefully you've hired people and processes exist for identification of those things instead of you know they they stop being scary unknown unknowns and start just being well we know we're going to come up against something eventually um on the opposite side of that then is there something that you know very early days uh, you guys did that has been something like a staple of the success for 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 the duration yeah, uh, hands down. And, you know, that's having a value focused approach. Uh, you mentioned something earlier, you know, you're, you're selling this like possibility, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, what we wanted to do, and, you know, I think guys like Neil Patel, you know, love him or hate him. Um, and, you know, other influencers, if you will, in the space, they've always stressed that, you know, just a lot of people hold their cards close and they don't want mm -hmm. to show what they're doing or uh, just give all the answers. I've yeah. learned most business owners at least in our target market which is you know more small medium business owners you know between often 10 and 100 employees or something mm. like that that's where our clientele sit most of the time they're not going to have the know-how to implement the things you recommend so and if they do good for them you give them value like i believe if we give value people remember that people remember how you make them feel right so yeah we implemented that very early on that's what we said with the sales process of of putting together a customized recommendations video. It takes a lot of our time. Like we do an audit, we put together this video, and we don't know if they're gonna you know, go with us or not. I mean, we try to qualify as much as possible. In the early days, we didn't qualify. There's people that you know could only pay a couple hundred dollars a month, which you know our minimum retainers, you know, a thousand plus a month. Um, and we just gave these videos out. But then you know, you got we got referrals and people watching the videos and we could track who watched the videos and it was just awesome. So that's something yeah. that I believe is a cornerstone to our success is um, giving value. If we cut that out and somebody just talked to us and we gave a proposal and we cut that middle step out of saying, you know, not even just a PDF report of here's your audit, here's your, you know, this is mm -hmm. a video of, of myself or someone on our team talking, walking through, showing visuals of what their competitors are doing. That has been very, very critical. And I think, you know, when they look at that process first, an agency that says, hey, we had a conversation, here's a proposal. It's a night and day difference for yeah. for your other yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And, and and I think if you if you stick to that focus in 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 the um ad, uh, showing value, it, it it's very hard to um it's very hard to argue with. So okay, you know, results might not come one month or another month, and that's because of external factors or it's because someone did something silly on a website because that happens uh yeah. but if you've proven time and time and again that you know you can produce results and that you care and that you're there to produce value then the conversation isn't an angry one the conversation is a collegiate one where you can have a a, a conversation a, 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 a meaningful conversation that talks about what happens next instead of we're unhappy we haven't had results we're leaving um they care, they know you care, so they're not going to do that. Absolutely. Expectations management is huge. Um, the other big thing is we turn down a lot of business, like more than I would like, like, you know, hundreds of thousands a year of business that we just turn down because 
um, you know, part of that process is we look at, you know, the foundational elements. It might be a custom CMS or, you know, mm. very a website that is a house of cards. If we were to touch it, the whole thing could come down. Um, so we have our preferred platforms. I mean, you know, WordPress, we do a lot of work on WordPress, Shopify. Um, we, we look at these different criteria. We also manage, we have the right questions on our initial call or discovery call with a, a prospect. And, uh, you know, looking at those questions, they might say, I, I want SEO, I want search engine optimization, but I want to be at the top of Google and see this many leads in the first month or two. So immediately I jump in there and I say, no, 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 no. Like this is not how SEO works. It's a longer term investment. So we found too that managing those expectations is very, very important. We're, everyone says they under promise and over deliver, but we really, we really do. Try to live by and, and, and like you say, if lots of people do live by it, but uh, judging by their retention figures, they don't, um, they don't actually mean it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so if someone's listening to this podcast now and they're thinking, right, I'm going to start an agency and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do a really good job, but I need some advice from Jesse. What advice would you give them? Yeah, I think um, I was listening to one of your podcasts before this and she's like, don't start an agency. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, um, you know, it, it's like any business. Uh, there's ups and downs. Uh, it's not smooth sailing. If that's what you're expecting, it's definitely you know, yeah. not going to business in the first place. I think when you start an agency, figure out exactly what your agency, figure out obviously like any business who your target market is. Are you working mm. for big enterprise companies and you're going to manage, you know, I know some agency owners where they manage 15 clients and they make, you know, just as much as we do. And we have about 60 plus clients. So mm. Um, you know, figure out that, figure out, you know, who your market is, who, who are you going to work with? Enterprise companies work very differently than small, medium companies oh, who yeah. are often working with teams. Um, and then figure out what are you offering? What is your main focus? Don't try to be a jack of all trades. If you do that, you, you're, you're going to set yourself up for failure unless you have some super talent of doing everything. Well, yeah, it's very hard to build consistent processes and consistent conversation consistent narrative and expertise if you're delivering uh high small medium and large uh, retainers to every business that existed ever um and and if you look at most agency websites it more or less says as the he headline on the home page we do everything for everyone please buy yeah. from us um if you say i solve this problem for these people they go oh i'm this people and i have that problem i should buy this thing um, and and you can speak that same way all the way through marketing, all the way through sales, all the way through operation, and it, and and everyone can kind of get behind it. It's brilliant. Good bit of advice, Jesse. Thank Thanks. you so much for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me, Chris. It was a pleasure. Thank you. And in our next episode, we'll be speaking with another agency leader to hear their story and the lessons they learned along the way. So thanks very much for listening. Ah, ah, ah.